Gary, any injuries? Um, not that I can gather. Um, <coughs> we had Eric Peters was felt his hamstring during the game, but um, got through it okay. So, so maybe it was just a sort of nerve-related one. Um, apart from that, I think everyone's got through okay. Um, you know, which you which you'd always find sometimes that you know. Uh, the back-to-back -back games after an, an international break where some players have travelled, but I thought on the whole the players cope pretty well with maintaining that intensity. How is um, James McLean coming along and Klukas, how are they coping? Yeah, we had them both involved this morning for, for the first time, um, albeit on the sides of a training session rather than actually actively in the middle of it. Um, <clears throat> I think for different reasons, James of course as long as he doesn't get contact, as long as he doesn't fall over, can do everything. But obviously that's difficult to put him into a, a competitive session, but we can still maintain his fitness and maintain his his sort of um, mental alertness, if you like, by putting him around the edges of sessions. Um, and Sam for different reasons. So, you know, what we don't want Sam doing just yet, although he's got through everything well, and he's back with a group in terms of warm-up, pass and drill, possession on the outside, you know, where he's where he's not going to be overly exposed. And then the aim really is to try and build that up um, and expose him a little bit more in terms of the load, in terms of the challenge of training. And then and then hopefully if he manages that quite well, then uh, he'll be back into full training pretty sharpish. But we're pleased to have, to have got him back out there. And I think for him as well, it's nice for him to at least feel part of what we're doing, you know, because obviously it's been a frustrating, it can only be really frustrating being a new player at a club and not being able to train, you know, it's not an ideal start, but, um, you know, we're grateful that that's the only way we could really get them into the building. You talked about the other day, you talked about it being the second game of a, of a sort of almost three game week where people get more tired and whilst continuity is really important, you must be thinking about making a few changes this weekend because of what you said. Yeah, I think that's always the battle. I think it's always a challenge when you start at the beginning of a week and you, and you have three games and you know that players have travelled internationally as well. Um, you look at you know how well, <coughs> how well do they actually cope physically and also the technical performance in a game? How well do you predict they're going to cope in the next game uh, if they play again? Um, and what does the team need? And like you say, I think um, exactly that. You battle against the benefit of continuity, particularly when the team's performing much better, um, against a lack of intensity, if that's the case, if you don't make changes. So so it's always the same battle, I think, really. I don't think there's ever one set answer for, for everything, but what we'll have to try and do is make the right judgment call. And, and sometimes you only know if that's the right judgment call when the game starts, because you could start with a lack of um, a lack of energy, which can be a problem. You can start with a lack of synergy, which can also be a problem. So he's trying to find out which one's the right one. And, and I would say, unfortunately for me this time, I'm the one that has to make that decision because it's, it's, there's no hindsight involved and you just have to go with what your gut tells you. And I'm sure you will go with what your gut tells you. But um, in terms of Tuesday night when, when we played, there was a, a little bit of dissent from some of our fans, which you mentioned briefly regarding how we kept possession and how the ball was going backward. Can you expand on, on why you think it's, I mean, obviously we know it's important to keep the ball, but why do our fans have to be patient? Because it can't help the players getting on their backs like they were. No, I think, I mean, the first thing with it is, I mean, on, on some of those occasions, and I spoke to the players at halftime, in, in, in retrospect, I actually agreed with some of the, you know, if, 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 if a moan indicates that they would want someone to play the ball forward a little bit quicker, then that's exactly what we spoke to the players about at halftime. But... But it was ironic because when the moans, I say the moans, when the, when the what's, what's a politically correct word to use? Displeasure. When the displeasure, when, when, when you heard the displeasure, um, and it wasn't bad, was it? Let's be really honest. But what it did is it actually forced one or two players into doing something that wasn't the right thing to do. And that's, and that's where it can affect the players. So, so I understand that at times we want to do that. Uh, we want to play forward with a bit more quality early on. And I'm not just talking about just getting it forward aimlessly because I don't think anybody feels that's the right way for us to go um, with the players that we've got. But at the same, and, but at the same time, you know, you have to also respect sometimes in certain games, i.e., Swansea dropping in and blocking up those areas and making it as very difficult to play that ball. Sometimes you have to be patient, and and um, you know, a couple of our chances actually came from a moment where we could have forced it forward, but we didn't. 
and we were patient and we went out the other side and then the spaces opened up. Um, so it has to be the right time to, to do it. And if there's a period of two or three minutes where it is a little bit, not slow at the back, so I didn't think we actually moved the ball slowly. I thought we actually moved the ball with reasonable tempo. But there was opportunities to play and then it came back. And I think at that point, that was a bit that the crowd weren't overly happy with. But, but you know, you, you watch any game around the world and and teams, are, you know, the best teams are patient and the best teams um, play forward and it's the right time to play forward. And, and um, <clears throat> I'm not suggesting we're anywhere near that, that type of bracket, but, but um, we have to play the game how we want to play it. And I said that afterwards. Um, and I understand that I understand it. There's two things to it. I mean, maybe, you know, they, they perhaps might have to be a little bit patient if they want to see good football. Um, but at the same time, you know, if they're not happy with that, then we have to do what we think's right, not what they want us to do. So, but listen, in an ideal world, we all we all get what we want, and we're all together, and we're all united in whatever happens, whether we're playing badly, whether we're playing well, whatever that is. You know, in an ideal world, we all stick together. But, but um, yeah, the modern game is such that sometimes teams move the ball a little bit slowly, and, and fans don't really like it. So, I want to see excitement, don't they? They want to see energy and aggression and they want to see positivity which we want to see but maybe just a bit more patiently than, than some of the fans want to see but I have no problem with it I've, I'm not sat here moaning about it um, what I'm saying is you know if it can just stay patient a little bit longer um, then it certainly will help help the players rather than make them feel like they have to then do what the fans want to a certain degree and in an ideal mm. world we'd score all the chances that we're making but we're being a bit profligate at the moment does that bother you? Um, not, not, not at the moment, because we are scoring goals um, and we are creating chances. If we, if suddenly those lack of chances means that um, we don't win games or we don't score goals, then, um, then you know, then then it becomes more of a problem. So, so I think at the moment, whilst it's not a huge problem, but I would definitely like us, you know, in answer to your question, I'd definitely like us to be more clinical. I'd definitely like us to, to, to reflect the control of the game and the opportunities in the game um, by taking those chances which then the scoreline then reflects how well we've played at times in, in both the last games you know so so um, yeah we have to be more clinical definitely. And Ryan Woods has obviously had lots of uh, plaudits because he's come in he's hit the ground running he's done well Joe Allen's played better in, in the last match I thought that was Joe Allen's best game for a while but a word for Kuka Martina? Yeah Kuka I think has been excellent I think Kuka's a, a one of those players that sometimes goes under the radar a little bit because he does a lot of things well and he makes lots of good decisions but uh, he also gets forward he's also played a part in some of our chances um, he's got real good composure on the ball but the big thing for me is that you know he does his job how you'd want a fullback to do it you know he he, uh, he defends when he needs to defend <coughs> although at times I felt in those areas against Swansea we needed to perhaps do it a little bit better with the fullback and the wide man and the midfield player that ends up that side because they got in two or three times, but uh, he settled in really well. He's a really popular lad. Um, you know, I think most of the new players have have settled in really well. You know, we're trying to bring good characters into the building. We're trying to bring players in that will play for the team and, and will sacrifice themselves for the team sometimes. And so, for me to stand there and say he's played well, but sometimes you don't notice some of the things that he does is actually a, a compliment because that's what a good team looks like. You know, it's made up of all different types of players and. And uh, sometimes you need that little bit of um, little bit of glue to to bond it all together, you know. And, and certainly, I think Kuko's played his part in in, in that sense. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet.